What, what will we start with? Um, smoke on the water. <laughs> smoke on the water? <laughs> okay. Uh, or the one we did together. The, uh, yeah, we'll see what. Just for a moment, and then we'll, then I'll introduce you. Okay. All right. And so, okay, just, we'll just do like that one. Okay. Okay. Ready? Here we are. <laughs> okay. You were just asking about starting with something, and the first song that popped into my head is this. Happy Monday. <laughs> should know that song. Well, that's that's right. the first song everybody should learn. Yeah, really? Not necessarily the way I just did it. It's, it's good enough to just learn <laughs> power chords okay. or inverted power chords the way Richie really played. But if you want to throw in the bass part at the same time, that's what I do. All right, very cool. Well, we have my good friend Neil Hogan with us, so greetings. Greetings to you. I see people are already popping in their hellos. Okay. And uh, once we... Uh, We'll, we'll take requests I today. see one of my Totally Guitar students there, Steve, just uh, just said hello. And Reverend Hung Shur just said hello. We had such a lovely time at the Buddhist monastery okay. earlier today in Berkeley. So they served us a wonderful vegan lunch there, and we sat in on the ceremony. Uh, the ceremony that was broadcast worldwide. Oh, wow. Actually, so, uh, so it was really a special, special occasion. Yeah. To be able to experience that. No kidding. And I've known Hangshur for uh, quite a long time. Um, we met at a music camp. He was teaching spirits and music together because he plays the banjo and the guitar. So, I mean, how many Buddhist monks play the banjo now? Isn't that it great? might be required. Who knows? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to play at first. I walked into a music store. I was eight years old and I wanted to play that thing, the banjo. Well, I Didn't want to let you know, Neil plays just about anything you would ever want to learn. So if you have some requests, pop it in. I'll we'll we'll take a take a look. I've started a lot of shows like that, you know, and and even people that didn't know me very well. Like I was opening for Al Stewart one time, and um, I just I said, you know, I'm not really sure what I'm going to play. And somebody calls out something. They said, play something like Led Zeppelin. So we ended up playing Stairway to Heaven, and, you know, and um, <laughs> Babe, I'm going to leave you, and all this stuff like and and. The show just went off the rails because um, I didn't play anything I'd planned on playing. Um, yeah. They just kept, and I was only playing for like 20 or 30 minutes. Dave Nachmanoff was playing after, and then we were both playing with Al. That was at our first camp. You were there, 2013. Yes. Well, we yeah. could do Stairway to Heaven if, if you want. If no, you, if, I'm, I'm okay with that. He has the no Stairway to Heaven. Story. Yeah, yeah. I actually learned it from Jimmy Page mm. years ago. He he came into the hotel. I was playing at the Park Hyatt Hotel, mm -hmm. and uh, he and his. A band at that time, The Firm, was oh, yeah. staying at the hotel. He came down at the end of the night, and for about an hour we were passing the guitar back and forth. And finally I said, well, teach me something you wrote. He said, okay. So, so he, he did this one. Very and nice. so I'd always, you know, vowed I would never learn that tune because everyone was playing it, but... You know, it's it's like smoke on the water. You have to you have to know it. I was just working on this with a student two days ago. Everybody has to be able to play Stairway to Heaven in spite of the fact, and it's one of the greatest songs of all time. I'm not that big Led Zeppelin fan, but I can't, I gotta give them their due. That was, it was a masterpiece. Yes, yes. Well, what's one that we might be able to, to play together, or that I can just kind of wander along with you, and then uh, then we'll take a look and see what the requests are. Oh, you know what? Okay, we could do a Led Zeppelin tune then. Okay. We could do uh, Babe, I Won't Leave You.
Too. He played lead guitar on Al Stewart's first album. Al had a tune, a 17, 21 minute song called Love Chronicles, and Jimmy is noodling along in the background for like, it's, it's a suite, there's like six different parts, right? Yeah. But it's, it's Jimmy Page as a studio musician back in 1970, I think, doing, doing uh, lead stuff on Al's first album. Wow. Anyway. Yeah, well, it's kind of interesting that uh, Brian makes fun of me sometimes because I pretty much missed out on popular music and pop culture. I was listening to Bulgarian women's choirs and, yeah. and Turkish folk music and Doc Watson. And then you got that bluegrassy Delman stuff, Rome. somehow yeah. the mandolin some, world. Right, and, and uh, somehow I, I missed out on popular music growing up. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and here you have just embraced it, yes. Uh, you know, all those tunes. And I'm trying to keep it alive, you know. It's, it's dying, but people are still into music from the 60s and 70s. Oh, they are, they are. And uh, I had one young student who would you know, come in every, every week, and he would want to learn something from the 60s and 70s. It's, you know, mm -hmm. so that music is still you know, wonderful, and, and there's still enclaves of it well alive. Yeah, and so. nobody's writing stuff, not only just like the Beatles, but nobody's writing stuff like what the Carpenters did, or oh, a lot yeah. of other stuff from that, that era. Yeah, do you, you know? do that? Um... You know, we, we messed with this one time, and I just, I, I remember the last time you were here, yeah. you gave me a short little lesson on that. I, I was thought of, I thought of, anyway, yeah. I, I did mess around with it a lot, and I, and I think I, I had you, yeah. you, we worked on uh, Pat Metheny, right? Um, <laughs> Anyway, so that was yeah. the last time you were here, we sort of traded lessons. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I went home and practiced. You probably didn't go practice last time I, at home. You know, I practiced close to you. That's right, that's right. I'm oh, good. Well, can You've you... now just become my worst student. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I confess. I am Niels Worth's worst student. Uh, but the most successful, too. So, you know. When people are asking about various songwriting things, sometimes I, I, they say, well, why did, why did the Beatles do this? Why did they get away with this chord progression? And I said, because they didn't take lessons from me. They didn't know you couldn't do that. Yeah. 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 Well, could you second? Could you do something with, with it? Well, if I played it, there's a pile of with chords close that were close to you. Probably. Probably? Okay, sure. let's, let's see what happens. What key is this in? Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Actually, in G, it starts, it starts on way C. 
I confess I made up that little that's okay. part. <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. Well, that was cool. close to you like you've never heard it before and we'll never hear it again. Like, uh, that's what he did. Yeah. That's cool. Unless they track down this recording. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So we got to get this. Could, could you uh, close the curtain over here? Oh, yes. We've got a little. It's, the sun has come out. All of a sudden. It's been raining for like a week here. And yeah. I thought, oh, it's going to be dark by the time we do it. It's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And who, the sun came out. The sun. It's a miracle. This is, we should, yeah, we should do Here Comes the Sun or something. We could. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they're with the sun. Yeah, okay, so now we could do. Well, yeah, it's, that's incredible the rain you've been having here uh, in Northern California. Except wow. for the floods and mudslides, it's, it's fabulous <laughs> because that's what's starting to happen now. Wow. This quick, you know, two yeah. weeks worth of rain and uh, six years of almost none of it. It's mixed blessing. Yes. Yeah, but. Well, Neil, well, I would love for you to play one of your originals. You've written some oh. nice things, too. And while you're doing that, I will go and, ch and check the comments, and we'll say some, some hellos and see if we have some oh. requests. Okay. Okay. okay, sure. Check, check that out. All right, then I will play one called uh, Quicksand, I think. Unless there's a request for something else already. This one does have a chord progression that's sort of followable in spots. Always sounds great. Very pretty. We had some comments there. Very pretty progression. And Thanks. Yes, lovely. Yeah. That one is definitely followable. It's B minor D. G, oh, you know, it's like I should have been here. You can noodle along, I could, I could, and uh, and that's the kind of a bridge version. There's there's like three other parts, but I figured oh. you know today with our with our time time frames, I don't need to play a six minute tune. Well, we did get one request that came in uh -oh. uh, for classical gas. Oh, so, wait a minute. That reminds me of. That was a famous song, right? <laughs> a very famous song. Okay. For a long we time. should be able to play that. Right. Right? Right. Okay. Oh, the water is wide. That would be. Oh, we have water is wide request, too. We could okay. probably, nice. probably nice knock the full, you know, knock that right. one out, too. Um, um, so, uh, I do it on the harp guitar, and uh, we did a, a class on this. Uh, I do it this Tuesday, a uh, little Tuesday online class mm -hmm. and Mason Williams sat in on the class. So, I remember he, I yeah. remember hearing you talk right, about that. Right, yeah, so. I, just, uh, I just couldn't crash the class at the time. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And you worked it out uh, probably. I did, before. you know, um, yeah, yeah, many years ago there were, um, when I was, uh, you know, this came out, I was a teenager, barely, and um, there were, in the little guitar playing world I was in, there were three or four songs that were like everybody's measuring stick that nobody actually knew how to play because you couldn't get music to these in 1968, 69, 70, right? 
And um, one was Blackbird. Nobody really knew what Paul McCartney was doing in Blackbird. There was Angie, of course. Right. Yeah, Graham Zuber and Paul, Paul Simon did that. That's what kind of brought it to to the United States, to us. Yeah. Um, and this was like the masterpiece of all of them. You know, it's like nobody had really any idea what was going on in classical gas, how to play it or something. And I, as, yeah, as a 14-year-old or something, just struggled and struggled. And, you know, it took me about 10 years, but I think I finally figured it out, you know, listened yeah. to it enough. And, and then uh, had a few interesting conversations with Mason Williams about it many years later, which was not so much about the song, about other things. But because um, I was, I wanted to do, I did a lesson on one of his other tunes. We'll see if we can talk about that later. But the Smothers Brothers theme is a very cute, very cool song of his. Too. Oh, so, but let's take a stab at this. Okay, well, we might give each other cues yeah. here as we go. Uh, uh, how about I'll, I'll start it okay. off and you can play a little, okay. like the second phrase. Or okay. Same parts at the same time. <laughs> at the same time. Uh, accidents happen. Wonders never cease. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that was, it was anyway, it was just really fun to, to work that out. And, and Mason eventually sent me like a book that he put together that had like finally the real music in it or something, you know. Oh, so it was kind of right. cool to get this big thick book from him. That, yes. Uh, He's all these just cool tunes in so there. So generous with his music. Yeah. And what was the Smothers Brothers theme? So he was a 
a comedy writer for the Smothers show. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. You can keep the capo on oh, if you okay. want. Sure. Uh, the water is wide. Okay, we might well, try. Water is wide. Yeah. We have a request for all. Let's stuff. play a little bit of the Smothers theme because I don't know if I can remember all the. It, it, it's the same theme done in like four different keys. Oh, really? Right. It's a really bizarre little intro, but but the main theme is this, right? Um, So it keeps landing a half step low when you expect it to resolve, right? So you hear this. Yeah. 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 So, so that's kind of like the uh, the hook in it is all, and then that happens in a different key. So I have a lesson on this at Totally Guitars. If you want to check it out, Totally Guitars. Okay, I'm going to go there. A whole lesson on a finger picking version of uh, the Smothers theme, which cool too. Well, that is funny. Uh, that reminds me of the first time you came to visit at Long Island at the shack, as we call it, where Brian and I live in our the little palace. 1909 shack, <laughs> uh, his grandparents' shack. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I invited uh, you to come and stay for a couple of days while you were out there. It was definitely coincidental because we were heading to New York for kind of a vacation without much of a plan. Um, and so Nani and I had, um, you know, had like three or four days there, but I think it was only like a week or so before we went that you called me for something completely unrelated. Yeah. And you mentioned you were in Long Island, and I, I said, oh, what a coincidence, we're going there. And you said, well, why don't you come out and visit us? And I thought, well, let's see, go see the Statue of Liberty or go hang out with, with friends. Yeah. <laughs> we left town quick. Took the train out there, and my cousin Carl drove us up, and, and there you and Brian were. And I'll let you carry the rest of that story. Well, and then Brian turns and says, Neil Hogan? Well, you're my guitar teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so it turns out he was one of your students. He on was a, a, one of the online students. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that, that was uh, definitely a shocking little uh, <laughs> uh, you know, flash that... That's yeah. yeah. That was, I was I was honored that cool. to be his guitar teacher, yeah. you know, and when he had you around all the time, but he probably didn't listen to anything you said, oh, yeah. or he he was probably intimidated. That was it. Oh yeah. You know, can't learn anything from her. She's oh. too good. Oh no, it's it's the uh, he says the cobblers sh yeah. children never have new shoes right. <laughs> you know mm. and so yeah i still haven't really quite learned how to sail from brian he hasn't really quite <laughs> learned to play guitar from me <laughs> so we have that you know on our list some sometime to yeah. teach each other our... miss him on this trip but i'm glad you could make it out this yeah, thank you. Again, and uh, thank movies. you to our friend sashi who's joining us here mm -hmm. yes. got the sun out of my eyes <laughs> yes and uh, Hank Schur is saying hello also to Shashi as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Water is Wide was a re request. Oh, yeah. um, we get to it in C or D. I, I'm going to have whatever. to follow you on it. I know it only vaguely. So, so. That's from Stephen St. Lyon. We could do it in uh, either of those games. Let's see. Let's see. Let's, let's try it in. So, see? So, like that, right? It's better. Okay. No, no, it doesn't go there. Okay. How well do you know the melody? Probably better than I do. Yeah.
Yeah, that's a standard one that's uh, played at the end of the harp guitar gathering every year. Ah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah, usually in, in the different key than this, but I thought that would be a little mm. easier. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I did a couple arrangements of, of uh, some other Irish tunes, you know, Danny Boy and uh, The Star of the County Down. Those are uh, just other, you know, uh, beautiful tunes from that yes. same kind of folk background. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll go back to my, my regular guitar if you want to play sure. another one that you think I could follow along and unless there are some other requests okay. coming. Come that is from Stephen Flyer, by the way. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's one of my students in New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. A totally guitar is a member. So, thanks for bringing that up, Steve. He's probably been working on his own arrangement of it, I think is what happened. So we're just, we just, oh, we're going to get that stolen okay. from him. Uh, you know, right. I mean, stolen from us. Yes. Well, there are some playing. pretty arrangements out there. Yeah. yeah, my friend Doug Young, I think, did one just relatively mm -hmm. recently. He's somebody else that teaches at our camp every year. Yes. And, uh, so, someday we'll get you there. But I know September's a rough time to get to California, mm -hmm. I think. And you're got to get you a few years in advance yeah. booked. Well, I don't know. We can, we can make arrangements. Maybe. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're going up on our 10th year of this. Wow. It's pretty, yes. pretty neat. We could always get a solid crew of about 30 or 35 people at the International Guitar Camp. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Been fun. Great. So. Okay, what, uh, oh. Uh, a little, uh. Oh boy, okay. I might need a pick for this. Start dancing out of your seat. Uh, it's gonna end. <laughs> yeah, man, that is amazing. Very 
you're on. It's fun to hang out with you and play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I would definitely have to work on something. There's so much going on in there. That's that's no, sometimes. No, what you do was just great. Well, once yeah. I settled into like a little bass yeah, vamp, little bass thing, I think that yeah. was that was the, that was the ticket, you know, because yeah. you have so much melody and other riffs going on in there. That, and just a little extra percussion was, yeah. I think, the right touch. Something I, I tell students when we're, well, all of a sudden they start playing with other people sometimes. Yeah. And many of them work on, you know, complicated instrumentals. This is what I do. And, and I say, well, you know, if you're going to play with somebody else now, everybody has to do less. You know, <laughs> right. tone down what you're doing, you know. Yeah. You could be less percussive <laughs> if you have a drummer. And you could be, you know, whatever. So, yeah. um, but, you know, I, I do the same type of thing that you do with a lot of things. It's like, let's get everything in there. You know, <laughs> let's get all six instruments <laughs> happening at the same time. That's what's fun, you know. Yeah. yeah. Try when so there's a question and a request. Uh -oh. A question and request. The question from David Patrick says, what is the finger-picking tune in different keys that Gent was singing? Oh, oh, it was the it's... Smothers Brothers theme. The theme from the Smothers Brothers TV show. It was that little thing, this melody. Eventually it happens in A flat. Uh, also written by Mason Williams. Yeah. And then it happens an octave higher in F. Yeah. Anyway, yes, so it's the theme from the Smothers Brothers. And the only place you could learn that is at my site. What's that? I don't know if they can hear me. Oh. That was from David Patrick. Yeah. From David Patrick. We got that. David Patrick was asking about the yeah. song that I said, the finger picking tune that went through a lot of different keys. Yeah. And that was it. And there's a Amazing. request from Carol M. Can you play Rosa May? <sighs> It's very long. She's another one of my uh, one of my campers. Carol comes to our camp every year. She's been uh, she's been a pretty pretty regular. Um, it's just it's this this is a very simple song actually to follow. It's just that it's quite long. But the main theme is just a, it opens. Oh uh, that's right. We've got a request for a, a song that I wrote called Rosa May. I'll make it a really short story and I'll just play a little bit of it. But it was um, it was inspired by a trip to Bodie, California, which is mm -hmm. a, a, a um, a ghost town out on the eastern side of the Sierras near uh, Mono Lake and uh, this was a, 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 a gravestone that was like outside of the main cemetery because Rosa May was uh, not honorable enough to be in the main graveyard even though she'd been married to the mayor after a, an earlier life um, a little more colorful earlier life and so there was, I even bought a book at the store there about Rosa May and her, her story so it opened up with just this a little vamping thing progression. Then the main theme starts here. three other parts that I all consider like episodes to that, but that's kind of like the chorus, it keeps coming back to that. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite long because each other part is, is that long, right? So it's, it's like, I can't even consider those verses or episodes in the song and then the, that chorus. Yeah, so. it's, it, has a, it sounds like the theme song from a movie. Yeah, it definitely has has kind of a... So there are some of my songs that, like, that would lend itself very well to lyrics. The melody is real easy to follow, you know, and things like that. Okay, any any lyricists here? <laughs> yeah. So we have another request. Okay. So Dermot says, Thank you to both of you. Can Neil play Who Done It and Muriel play Vincent? Okay, Who Done It and Vincent. Let's see. I could do a little bit of Who Done It. It's the same thing. All my songs are like five-minute songs, you know. Like they're they're mini symphonies. Who Done It was. Uh, I'll just I'll just play a little of that, and then you can we could do Vincent and maybe maybe call it a day. I don't know how we're doing on time, but okay. so Who Done It was sort of inspired by. Oh, okay. 
Who Done I'm sort of inspired by mystery movie kinds of things, Columbo oh, and stuff okay. like that. Is it one I can play along with? Or Probably. Not? This has a chord progression you'll be able to follow. Um, okay. okay, everyone else follow along. Got that? <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's the bass just climbs from e, mi e, e minor to G to A minor to B three or four times and then, okay. uh, then comes back through C. So it opens up with a nice little spooky chord. That was a request from Dermot, who is another uh, another totally guitars guy from the uh, UK, I think Scotland. Oh, okay. And so I hear from him every once in a while. And Vincent, I, I do an A. Yeah. A G fingering, right, at the second fret. Right. Okay. I think I can follow that. And uh, let's see. I'll have to turn this one down. Actually. Couldn't hurt if we both and, and if if you can check, the, there might be some requests on both Facebook and YouTube. So check both of those. Okay. Out. This is a similar thing. Of course, you've got your own beautiful arrangement of this that I will try not to step on. I'll save the bashing Tom Don McLean stories for when we're off camera. <laughs> okay. I saw him play this year for a few minutes. Al Stewart and Dave Nachmanoff, my good friend Dave, opened for him here at the Mountain Winery in oh, back okay. in July. Yeah. And Dave had the horror stories, but never mind. You didn't hear that. No, no. He just gets. He needs a bonus in his check if he's going to play American Pie. <laughs> yes. It's a rider that is not included in the original contract. That's not the worst one. So sorry. Okay, never mind. You didn't hear it from me. All right. <sighs> Where's my lawyer? <laughs> I'm sure Don's not watching this. Okay. Okay. All right. Go. All right. I'm sure he is actually. He oh no. Watch, he watches regularly. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs>
the pallid blue and green. On regard un jour d'été, avec les yeux que on est maintenu. On brise sous le bois. Est-ce que sont les arbres, les fleurs? Le frisson des vieux, au terre et au mont blanc, une soupe Maintenant j'ai compris, c'est que sous ces cesser de me dire, doit souffrir pour sembler d'esprit, et c'est de les libérer. Ils pouvaient prendre qu'ils n'ont pas su. Which verse is that that you sing in French? Uh, well, it's a, a, couple, it a, completely a couple different? of the v verses. Uh, you know, I, it's a mashup of little, some sort, huh? Yeah, with a little help from Google Translate uh -huh. uh, <laughs> and uh, some occasional coaching from my audience. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd have to think there's got to be like an official French translation of it. It had to be a hit in France somewhere, too. You know, I didn't find one, so oh, I just went about to, to do one myself. It just it feels like a French melody, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that got me starting to play these thirds. Yeah. I feel, Where's my accordion when I need it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not here, thankfully. Right. Yeah. Two requests and a question. Okay. So, um, anyway, um, we have a couple questions and requests here. Yes. Um, Carol M says. Can you play, I'm sorry, Big G says, can you play Last Train Home by Pat Metheny? <laughs> we did that four years ago, last time she was here. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, nobody remembers, you're right. Yeah. Um, so, um, if you couldn't and hear what... Was there another request also? Uh -huh. Another request was for? And the other one is from Marlene Bouillot-Martinez. Mm -hmm. And she says, how high the moon? How high the moon. Mm. And lots of, lots of pop. Lots of comments. People are just loving everything you're doing. Oh, right. Freddie Barnes That's says true. that um, superstition is Stephen's favorite. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. Uh, hello, Bunny and Marlene. The regulars mm. here, and yeah, you know, oh. it's kind of fun when people uh, have kind of gotten to know each other through some of these online things that we've mm -hmm. been doing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, some of my um, some of my campers get together other times of the year with other campers. Like a bunch of them will fly to Phoenix and hang out for a weekend together, oh. and I don't even get invited. <laughs> and they have a great time. We, they they play guitar a little bit, and it's a little looser because it's like, um, you know. There's no watchful eye on them, I guess. So they they have a little a little more relaxed time than when I'm around, I guess. But um, and then they go to baseball games and stuff. But it's really neat. A lot of them say, you know, I, I, there's a guy in Canada who said, he said, you know, all my best friends now are people I met at camp, even though I, I live in a different country. Yeah. That was it's, so it's it's really neat how it's spread out like that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to tackle Last Train Home. We could play a little bit of it if you want to mess around. Last with Train Home. And there's a question from Stephen Flyer. Okay. 
He says, Muriel, can you explain how the bass and treble strings are set up? Oh, oh, okay. We have sure. a question. How the yeah, bass that's a great, a great, great place to go is talk about this behemoth. <laughs> this, uh, yes. Uh, How often do you change all the strings? That's what I want to know. Okay, they all need to be changed now, and I <laughs> and haven't gotten to around Hawaii. to it. I mean, I endorse GHS strings, and, and I still haven't gotten around to changing them. It's an all-day affair. So, yes, uh, I, I try to change one one bank of strings at once. These ones should be not banks. very necessary to change very often, right? The high ones will probably last better um, than the wound ones. Yes, but they do ring and sparkle better yeah. when I have when I have new they strings start on them, corroded. and you know they 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 are fine like this. But then when I change them to new strings, they go ah oh, yeah. like this, and you know, there's that that little new. So many of my students have strings. that. They come back and they change their strings, and they say, you know, every time I change my strings, every six months or whatever. I, I, mean, I got to do this more often. It was, it's, so much, it's like you got a new guitar. Yeah, I know, you do. You know, and, and it deteriorates so slowly that you don't really, you don't notice it day to day. Yes, you know? and I noticed that, that uh, the, the GHS, uh, you know, from the bright bronze set seemed to work, you know, really nice, the, the, mm. the best for these. So you have the high uh, so, ones tuned to a whole scale. Yeah, so they are, they're tuned to a scale, whatever scale I'm in. And uh, so in the case of Vincent, I, I tuned to this... I say a G scale, but uh, it would be if my guitar was tuned normally. But the whole guitar is tuned a whole step high, as though you had a capo on the second fret. So it's a smaller scale too. It's a shorter neck, yeah, and that's the, hence why it's tuned higher. Right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, then, um, then the sub basses. These are just extra heavy guitar strings or guitar on strings, and but they have to cut them off the spool a little longer. So I have to have them custom. Uh, made and sent to me, otherwise they, they end up right there, <laughs> which doesn't help me. So they're nylon with a silk wrapping of some sort? Uh, with this, uh, yeah. I mean, a nylon core? Nylon core yeah. and uh, silver alloy wrapped yeah. on around it. And also these are tuned in a scale, and, and sometimes... Uh, so you have six of those? Yes, I have seven, actually, on this instrument. Oh. They, they, the standard one has six, right. but I always feel like I want just one more. You know, Got to have 11 on that base amp. And, base envy, I think it is, yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so, in order to get the chromatic notes, I have this uh, half-step tuner here. Right, right, so every one of those strings can be raised a half-step. Right. Yeah, that's that really needed. cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so they're simply tuned like you would a harp. Uh, that it's, it's a scale. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, this one has the advantage of the harp levers. So this does come from a folk harp, these these little levers. Yeah, pretty neat. So, so Last Train Home, that's, uh, let's see, Matheny. Yeah, the Pat Matheny tune. Yeah. yeah. And it really just has, you, you'll, you'll be able to follow the chord progression. It, um, but it, it has, you have to fade in because it's a train song. It's a train. Thank you. 
Two of the songs that I, I, you know, ended up putting solo burdens together, and that was, it was a lot of fun, you know, making that get it work. I usually play it an, another time, another time for you, I'll play it an octave chord one. Yeah, anyway, you know, to make it a little more interesting, he of course improvises solos over that progression for a few minutes, and then comes back with the main theme. That's beyond my pay grade. Wow. <laughs> Improvising while I'm playing the chords and, you know, like that, but yeah, definitely an 18 though. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And no, this is yeah. this is great. You know, it's been, really anything else we should? Patrick wants to know what kind of guitar Neil is playing and what kind of wood it is. Oh, sure. Guess, or if you don't have time for high, how high the moon. So. Yeah, let's save that for the next time, I think. Yep. But uh, this was built by um, a builder in Santa Cruz named Ed Claxton. Oh, and, that's um, an Ed Claxton guitar. Yeah. 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 And we had a store back in the late 90s and into the early 2000s that we just carried guitars from sold small builders, um, you know, who couldn't make enough to be in Guitar Center and places yeah, really like that. a really nice guy, too. And yes. really, yeah, yeah. Yes. And he's just turned into a, a family friend. And so, um, so this was a guitar that was kind of destined for our store. And I was, uh, oh, okay, I'll try to make it a one minute story. But it was, it was destined to our store to, be, to go for sale in our store. And I was, uh, he called me on a Friday afternoon and said, can you come pick up the guitar, it's ready. And I said, okay, sure, so I drove over. And it was a rainy day and I decided I'm not gonna drop it off at the store. I'm gonna, um, uh, I'll just take it home and bring it in tomorrow morning when I'm coming in to, to man the counter. And uh, so I, I got home and I said, you know, I'm gonna take a look at this guitar, I'll play it. And, I was playing it for a few minutes and I'm thinking, you know, I have three students who have been waiting for the next Claxton to come in. And I've been totally happy with my Santa Cruz guitar. I never even thought I would get another guitar that I had for 20 years at the time. And, um, and I'm playing this guitar and I'm thinking, this is really I've played a lot of nice guitars just like you have, I'm sure, you know. And what's running through my head is that this is like the best guitar I've ever played. I, who am I going to let buy this? which one of those three guys gets the lucky guitar, you know? Yep. And as this is going through my head, my wife walks in, she's home from work, it's five o'clock or something, and she sees me playing this other guitar, and she says, she says, whose guitar is that? And I said, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> she grasped the situation, and she knew how expensive his guitars were, and that we were not in the market for a guitar. And 30 seconds later, she sits down and says, I think it's time you had a new guitar. So I still have the guitar. You married the right person. And the wife, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, she, Nani is wonderful. Yeah. But anyway, so the guitar, it, and, and uh, it's a German spruce top and koa back and sides, which is a Hawaiian relative of mahogany. 
Um, and it's so, so it, it's sort of voiced, you know, not as uh, deep and dark as a rosewood guitar, and not quite as bright and clear as a mahogany guitar. So it's it's um, it's and the the thing that I found about this guitar was almost every other guitar I've picked up. When I play some of my songs or certain notes, it's like I have to slightly compensate for something. I remember when I, if I don't play that note too hard or something like that. And this one had absolutely zero of that. It's like every note I could make sound however I wanted. And um, yeah, so this, this, uh, that's, how, that's how I came upon this Ed Claxton guitar. Yes. And I love it. Yes. I want to say hello to all our Santa Cruz friends, Ed and Steve and Amy, and yeah, it's, it's just not enough time in Northern California here. Yeah. Uh, heading out to Independence High School tomorrow and then on to Hawaii the day after tomorrow. Uh, so, we'll be flying out there. Volcano, we'll get to see the lava flow yeah. out there. Yeah, Kilauea is uh, erupting again. Yes. Yeah, luckily yeah. the other one has stopped and before it got to the road, the Mauna Loa oh, okay. eruption. Yeah, so right. that was getting a little scary because yeah. that's the main artery between the, the sides of the island. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. And, and uh, Maui, and going on there. Oh yeah, nice. And then Arizona, so we'll see some of our Arizona friends coming up as well. Are you doing Southern California too? Are you going to, to not NAM? Th not this time. Oh. Yes, so is NAM is not happening uh, ah. this, this time. It's in, it's in April this year. So. Oh, yeah. okay. So, okay. yeah, it uh, always seems like the, the swing through California is always too short, you know. Well, we love having you here, that's for sure. Well, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll hang out and play a few more tunes, and then I've got to teach uh, my student Ashwin pretty soon. Okay. And uh, then uh, we'll uh, be playing some more music after. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so thank you. Thank you all for Thank you. By. This is really fun. Yeah, yes. I'm glad, glad the uh, schedule worked out to where, to, you know, yeah, you, were, so we're do this real you nice. had to be here on Monday, and you, I know you do your normal Monday thing, so right. it was like it... it uh, I'm glad you called me last week and said, by the way, could we commandeer your house and, and would you be my guest? And I'm honored and thrilled. So oh, it's a blast. Thank you. Thank so. you. Always great to, to be here and hang out with you. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah and Nani too. Okay. okay. Well, we'll, we'll answer some of your other questions and, and uh, greetings uh, when we log in online here. So okay. See you then. So Bye. Long.